everyone. Welcome to Normalize Automation. I'm Sean Noble. I've been a product manager at PagerDuty for three years, and my focus has been how automation can speed up incident response time to resolve and reduce toil. I've always liked building automation tools and systems, and I've been doing this as an industrial and systems engineer for my whole career in retail, e-commerce, and now developer tools here at PagerDuty. Let's go through the agenda. I'll start by explaining why you should consider adopting automation for incident response and what normalizing automation in your organization means. Then I'll give an overview of automation actions and how they connect your team to the automation you already have. Next, I'll talk about how we've connected automation actions throughout the PagerDuty operations cloud, followed by a demo of several new automation actions capabilities to run your diagnostics and remediation. And finally, I'll point you to some related talks that you should check out and how you can sign up for a free automation actions demo and trial. Before I continue on, if you remember one thing about this session, it should be that you can use automation actions for diagnostics and remediation across the PagerDuty platform to accelerate incident response. Diagnosing incidents takes time. Our PagerDuty response data shows that the average customer spends more than 50% of their incident response in the triage phase. We define the triage phase as the average time it takes from the acknowledgement of the first responder until the handoff to the resolver or the designated specialist that is making the fix. This metric is important to monitor because it spotlights how much of the response is dedicated to understanding the makeup and severity of a given incident. Knowing what went wrong and who the right person is to fix it can take time, especially without any sort of automation embedded into the process. Manually triaging incidents can lead to delayed resolution times and excessive escalations. This is why figuring out how to automate diagnostics is so important to your incident response process. When you automate diagnostics, you can further reduce the volume of incidents that get escalated to specialists and speed up resolution of incidents. For example, you can invoke automated workflows that immediately run both diagnostic and remediation activities to deal with emergent behavior. Automation won't solve every problem, but it can help you deal with the known and reoccurring problems. You can collect diagnostic information responders need and potentially even mitigate or solve problems without needing to contact a human. You can reduce the number of escalations to subject matter experts by delegating the power for responders to take certain actions. In summary, reduce the number of escalated incidents by auto remediation and enabling responders and reduce time to the resolution by to resolution by speeding diagnostics and automating known resolutions. In order to connect your automation to your teams, you need to overcome several obstacles. The first gap is knowledge. How do I pass automation that one person developed to another effectively? How do I decide when a specific automation needs to be run? The next gap concerns skills. Most organizations only have a limited number of people capable of designing and implementing automation, and the automation that they design might not be suitable for execution by your generalist responder. And the third is access. In the world of microservices, your responders might lack access to the related applications and infrastructure around the problem you are trying to solve. What most companies are left with is automation in the hands of a few experts that they'd rather distribute broadly to the many. After explaining all this, it might seem like automation is a scary word. When I ask customers about when they plan on implementing automation in my interviews, I get a lot of feedback that their organizations are not ready to start with automation. They feel that implement the implementation and organizational change needed to implement automation is not yet in their grasp. Some of this comes from a misconception that automation has to be complex and large in scale in order to be worthwhile that you need a lot of it to realize value. But what if you could start with automating just a few things to get your teams used to audit, get your teams used to automating, get your teams used to using automation to solve problems? What if you could normalize it in a few teams and then let it spread across your organization? 
This is why we built Automation Actions. It lets you connect any size and scope of automation to the people who need it to reduce triage and resolution time. PagerDuty Automation Actions connects your first line responders to corrective automation directly within PagerDuty. Instead of pushing escalations to specialists when an incident kicks off, responders can triage and resolve incidents themselves using safely delegated automation. As a result, teams reduce MTTTR, lower interruptions to specialists, and quickly diagnose and remediate incidents. In other words, Automation Actions connects automated diagnostics and remediation to the incident response workflow. Give your responders a set of actions that they can automatically invoke when an incident occurs. Rather than having to escalate to expert specialists who manually run common tests, responders can safely and securely invoke this automation themselves from within PagerDuty and see responses delivered in real time back to your incident timeline. We've recently launched several new and exciting enhancements to Automation Actions. First, Automation Actions can connect to and invoke workflows in PagerDuty's Runbook Automation platform in the cloud. If you're interested in Runbook Automation, I've got the name of the talk you should watch it, that you should watch next at the end of this presentation. Next, Automation Actions can be invoked from Event Orchestration. This is big news because you can now use Event Orchestration's powerful nested rules to determine exactly which automation should be invoked for a given incident so that it triggers immediately after an incident happens. For example, you can run several diagnostic steps and a remediation step all concurrently, or you can set off the rule to kick off a workflow. You can set up the rule to kick off a workflow in process automation on-prem or runbook automation. Also, Automation Actions is now in more contexts. You can use Automation Actions in Slack and in mobile so that you have automation when and where you need it. Finally, Automation Actions is coming soon to customer service operations. Give your customer service agents the power to run additional diagnostic steps when they're handling a case or escalating to an on-call resource. Now, the best way to show you some of these exciting features is with a demonstration. So please sit back and enjoy while I take you through an example. I'm an engineer on the payments team at Acme Co. And my team has been experiencing a reoccurring incident for our payments API service that happens every few days. After I had responded to it a couple of times, I documented some of the steps that I've been taking to diagnose and remediate the issue. And I created three automation actions for me and my team to use in the future. Let me walk you through one of the actions, a script that retrieves the last five errors on the payment service. This script calls a Python command line tool with an argument that is extracted from the alert using a context variable. In this case, it is the region where the payment error is occurring, so I can target the right log file. I can use context variables in automation actions to pass the exact context that I want to extract from my alerts to my automation so that I don't have to write additional automation to call other systems for these parameters. I'm also going to add this automation to an event orchestration rule so that the action is run automatically the next time this type of incident happens. This is very easy to do as the rule automatically filters for automation actions that are available to be run by my team on this service. Now I'm all set to quickly triage and mitigate this problem the next time it happens. And of course, as soon as I say that, I get paged for an incident through my mobile app. The incident indicates that the payment service is failing one of the basic health checks that are run periodically to make sure that the end-to-end -end payment flow is functioning as expected. I open up the incident on my app and see in the initiated automation actions section that an action to check the last five errors on the payments API has already been triggered by event orchestration and completed as expected. Looking at the diagnostic, this error is telling me that I'm getting a series of timeouts in the payments queue. And the alert details show that it is trying to connect to our last card gateway. There are a number of reasons why this could be, but the most frequent cause is a problem with the payment gateway for last card. 
I'll do a quick check to see if it's up and available to pass payment authorizations over to Last Card by triggering the check payment processor action. While this is running, I switch over to my laptop just in case I need to start digging into this issue manually. I check in on my team's response channel in Slack to see if anyone else is online who may be looking at this issue. Based on what I know so far, I've decided to run the script that I think will remediate the issue by clearing the payment authorization queue. This may cause a few customers to have to resubmit their checkout transactions, but this action does a great job of quickly mitigating this error. I trigger this action in Slack and wait for the action to complete. After it finishes, I switch back over to the web application to check out the output report. Looking at the output report, I see that the payment queue has been successfully cleared. Now I'll switch back over to the incident to see if the monitoring application has sent over a resolve event, which will auto-close the incident. And there it is, the incident is resolved. All of these steps used to take me several minutes to pull up in a wiki, log into the relevant systems and copy paste parameters into CLI tools. And now I'm able to run all of this automation in a fraction of the time. Now that you've learned all about what automation actions can do for you, visit pagerduty.com and check out our automation actions page where you can watch an explainer video and sign up for a demonstration and free trial of automation actions for your account. If you'd like to learn more about some, some of the topics that I spoke about today, please check out these related talks to learn more about automated diagnostics, runbook and process automation, and event orchestration. Thank you very much for joining me today, and feel free to drop me a note if you have any questions about automation actions. And enjoy the rest of your PagerDuty Summit. Thank you.